the future of multi-material 3D printing is here. And now it's open source too. Stay with me and let's discuss the box turtle. This is the latest invention from the Armored Turtle team, a team of dedicated, multi-material focused open source developers. I've been lucky enough to be one of the very few people invited to join the Box Turtle Closed Beta. As you may have seen in some of my oldest videos, some they removed, I've been exploring the possibility of easily adding a multi filament solution to clipper based FDM machines for a very long time. For many, many years ago, on an ANET A8, I tried to use one of these 3 to 1 nozzles to achieve this. Suffice to say, that didn't work. Eventually, I gave up, until around a year ago. I strapped four BMG clone extruders to the top of my old bed slinger, using an old MCU, ironically from the ANET A8, to control them via clipper, and did manage some basic multicolour prints. Moving on, I settled on the ERCF. In the beginning of the year when V2 was released, despite trying every single buffer solution available, I just could not get along with it. Eventually I settled on the filamentalist passive respoolers to remove the buffer completely, but this still had its drawbacks. It had a huge footprint and needed a dedicated space above the printer to house the spools. I had this setup working somewhat reliably, albeit with only five spools due to space constraints. I was very excited when I was asked to join the Box Turtle beta program. The idea of an AMS-like solution that will fix all of the downfalls of ERCF whilst giving a simple yet elegant solution akin to that of the Bamboo AMS that shook the industry a few years ago. It was simply too good of an offer to pass up. Now, although I'm making several references and comparisons to the AMS, I want to be clear that the Box Turtle is an automated filament changer, or AFC for short, and is no way labelled as an AMS unit. In the short amount of time I've been in the beta program, the Box Turtle has gone from a working prototype to an extremely capable, highly maintainable solution with incredible quality of life functions such as the ability to quickly remove the respoolers and the extruders. Box Turtle is clearly heavily influenced by the Voron design aesthetic, and so it's only fitting that I modified the usual four lane Box Turtle to fit atop my Voron 2.4 by adding a fifth lane, designing custom skirts and adding the little turtle insignia to the front. The Box Turtle uses small N20 geared motors and TPU printed tires to respool filament on eject. This solution keeps the filament on its spool with minimal slack. And as an aside, the turtle is capable of using all spool types, including cardboard, which is known to have issues with the AMS. The filament is fed from the top and activates a trigger, which combined with some witchcraft software, activates the extruder, which takes the filament and parks it the other side of the extruder, primed and ready to be loaded into the tool head for printing. When a spool is called for using traditional tool designated commands such as T0 to T3 in G-code, the turtle feeds the desired lane into the hub, where the filament activates another filament switch, then is quickly loaded to the nozzle for printing. It's at this point where I created my first modification, and it's one that I've seen used by the vast majority of the beta testers. Dubbed Snappy, after the Snapping Turtle moniker, this is a servo based filament cutter based heavily on the EREC filament cutter designed for the ERCF. Adapted to simply screw into the back of the box turtle and just needing power and a spare GPIO, Snappy has the ability to cut the tips off your filament before loading them into the tool head, ensuring that you won't be pushing a deformed tip into the nozzle, potentially causing a clog. Some users opt for the Filometrics design, which adds a cutter directly to the tool head. There are developments ongoing amongst the box turtle team to design a purpose built filament cutting tool head designed specifically for multi material use. So what do you need other than the box turtle itself to run box turtle? Nothing more than a clipper based printer and a filament sensor on your tool head. And even without one, there's an optional DIY solution called Filatector designed by the Armored Turtle team as a quick standard solution that uses the same switch and ball bearing as the rest of the box turtle. The box turtle build process is quite involved. If you can maintain a printer, you can manage the build without many problems. It's essentially a frame and a lane and then repeat the same step of each for four lanes. Each lane consists of an e-spooler, an extruder and an idler roller at the back to keep the filament centred. 
whilst I don't own an actual AMS unit to compare it to, the functionality I've seen matched one to one, with further improvements such as an enclosure and dry box capabilities in the pipeline for future releases. And the build cost is significantly lower than the AMS. For roughly half the cost of an AMS and a little time and patience, you have a viable alternative. If you'd like to own your own box turtle, then there's a link in the video description to the Patreon of Armoured Turtle, where you can get the bill of materials. Once you have your bill of materials in hand, join the Armoured Turtle Discord, which is also linked in the video description, and open a ticket with proof, and you'll be invited to the beta program. There are already some vendors producing kits ahead of release. Some of these will be linked in the video description too. Once there are 25 completed beta units, the project will reach open beta. At the time of writing, there are 19 of the 25 assigned. So with all that being said, I'll leave you with this montage of the box turtle doing its thing. Happy printing.